Welcome everybody. Um, I'm Mark in the sales department, if you don't know me. Um, I have Jesse with me. He's the planner guy. So any questions, go that way. So we're gonna start out. Um, Jesse's going to go over the most important piece when you get ready to go planting, is connecting the planter to the tractor. The planter's got all these little zip ties on it. They're all color coded. They all got a, a writing on them. You can see everything. Well then, that's fine. We roll into the next season, but you still got the same planter. Oh, my zip ties are wore off. So, the best thing you can do is, is uh, there's a bunch of uh, solutions out there. I mean, I've seen people put calf tags on them, which is fine, but then they write on them with the Sharpie and oil hits it and it rubs off. So, then you've got eight or 10 or 12 hoses and they all got yellow tags on them. Still don't know what's what. So, you can get, um, there's little coil on wraps that you can put on there. Um, so that way you've got color coded and it's got inlet and outlet. Um, I, we offer little hose ends that you can screw on that are aluminum that plug in and they're all color coded and they've got an inlet and outlet on them. Best thing you can do. So that way when you hook up, you know you got the right hose in the right spot. Um, you're gonna put, you're gonna put your main lift um, in one, you're gonna go draw bar and fold in two if you got a DB. Uh, three is, is steering a lot of times if you've got a steerable axle and then when you get into the next ones then you'll go to vacuum uh, and then after that we'll have power beyond which is going to run all your IRHD if that's what you have. So yeah, making sure that the tractor's hooked up right. We've got good 7 pin power, good can power, um, that it's all there. So, so yeah, biggest thing of the season making sure we got it right off the bat. Yeah, so. When something doesn't work. Uh, blame the hoses before you blame anything else. It's not right. connected or they're backwards. You know, you can blame, well, you can blame the operator <laughs> if you want, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse up and this is what he told me. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. perfect. And we don't want to know what he called you. <laughs> so, we got that done. Um, we got our planner unfolded. So now if you have frame weight distribution, which this planter has, see this big cylinder out here on the wing, okay? It's designed to keep your wings on the ground level with your mainframe. There's no markers on this planter. There's no weight. Markers weigh something. Or if you have weights out on the end, okay? You still need to, it's what it's designed to try to keep the planter level in the ground. You have all your seed weight right on the mainframe, nothing on the wings. And all we're gonna do is we wanna get our wings set. So you're in the field, flat ground, it'll tell you to set it between 20 and 22. Now, this planter here, that setting is in the monitor, okay? You may have a planter where it's manual and it's gonna be system, it'll be in this side, and there'll be a gauge and there'll be a valve you will turn to set that gauge. Set it, drive through the field, look at the impressions the wheels are leaving in the ground, plant half the box, see what the impression of the wheels are leaving in the ground. It's not real scientific, okay? And a no-till, it's really hard. So they give you a kind of a setting to start with, you might just run with it, okay? So we got that set, now we're gonna check our row unit out, okay? We're going to start by just giving a good look over of our row unit, make sure everything's tight, everything's where it wants to be. Check our, our blades. We have new blades, or don't we have new blades? What do our blades measure? Okay. Best way to do it, take gauge wheel off, measure them correctly. Okay. 14 well, and a half. Is replaceable. Is replaceable. Yep. 15 is new. So, okay. um, I've got a tool in the shop that actually you don't have to take the gauge wheel off that you can come up and you can hook it right on the bottom of this blade and it comes out around here and it's got a little ruler on it so that way you can read that and you don't have to mess with it. But yeah, that's pretty critical, you know, and then that gives you the deciding factor, you know, did I wear off a quarter inch or did I wear off an eighth or three sixteenths or five sixteenths or whatever, am I going to make next season or not? So just making sure that we, we know our blades are going to last the season. Um, and then again, once they wear down, you're gonna to wanna to check that pinch point on the front, you know, to make sure that you've got the right pinch point, which is 
one and a half to two and a half inches. I like to see one and a half to two most of the time. So, yeah. Okay. Then we're going to check our gauge wheel arms. You moved that thing, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> and what we want to do, we want to make sure we have contact with the blade. You know, if, it, if it's too tight, it'll come up and it'll stick, it'll stay there, and then it's not doing anything for us. And then they don't turn very well. Um, plus, when you pick them up and you're checking that distance, you can wiggle that wheel a little bit to make sure that that bearing's nice and tight for you. So. Okay, then we'll go back. We're going to check our closing wheel frame. Okay. Bushings in here. Probably, and there's a wear point to those. Okay. You can flip them, though. You can... You know, because they're always wearing on the front. So you might get by one season, and they're fine, and the next season they're shot, you know, when you get it in. You can pull them out and you can flip them. You can get another year out of them, you know, versus um, having to replace them right away. So. And if you let them go too far, then you're, then you're buying this frame. Right. All there is to it, <clears throat> to get them tight again. Okay. Closing wheels, again, they need to spin. You know, so make sure they're not seized up before we start. Biggest thing there. Check this spring. Is that spring connected? Is it broke? Is this arm broke? Again, your depth setting. Free movement. Make sure it's there. Make sure that's not broke. Because it could be broke off. You wouldn't know it. Um, scrapers. Again, with that wheel, it's a little tough. You have the spoke wheel. You can see that scraper a little easier. Okay. Then we're going to go to our seed meter. Oops, wrong one. And we want to check our, our tension. Okay. This turns too easy. That's what the mechanic says. This turns too easy. Yep. Okay. So you want it. So when you're, when you're checking this, um, you want to be able to turn this, but it shouldn't leave there and go to that stop. I mean, it's gonna turn hard. When you got them set right, it's gonna turn severely hard, but you don't want it to, to come out of that detent. If it is, then you need to pop this off of here, pull this key, and back it off. And, and then you want it just so it's, it's really hard to move, but it don't go past and hit that little, hit that little stop there. And that, that'll be about perfect when you got them set. So. And, you, and you notice he released that from the motor. Yep. You don't want to turn the motor. Yeah, you don't want that, you know, because that could be the difference between right and wrong, you know, because that drag of that motor might allow it to over center, but if you pull away from that motor, it's probably perfect. So make sure you just pop this, pull it away, and you turn it. If you've got the ME5, which has got the flat disc on it, usually what you want is you want that contact, but you want to be able to take that and spin that, and it'll go about half a turn, a quarter to a half a turn past when you let go of it. Um, so that's the difference. On these bowls, you aren't going to be able to spin them a half a turn or a quarter turn. You know, they're just going to, they're going to turn hard. So good question. Um, yeah, on the flat disc, you, you, want it, you want to be able to flick that thing and let it roll a little ways. Yeah. So. Then your flat disc or this bowl, check it. Okay. There's wear points on all this. Oh. You know, check them out. Make sure you got the one you want in. This one is corn. From your distance, where's the bean? I got the bean. Right up behind you. Okay. See any differences from your distance? Not really. Little, maybe? Half the holes are yeah. shut in this one. They probably got better eyes than us. Yeah, so, I I mean, I'm sure they can see the difference <laughs> from across the room. So, make sure you got the wooden you want. Yellow, soybeans. Corn will be green. Now you notice this is black, but if you get into this planter here, they're all green. Okay. So you want to check all that. Make sure everything's clean. Make sure your double eliminator in here or on your flat dish, your double eliminator is set where it's supposed to be. It's not still set for way at the bottom for beans from last year. Okay. Making sure your knockout wheel is the right knockout wheel. Yep. Um, there's obviously different styles. I ran into a planter this year. You guys have been using it for two years. And he had a sorghum knockout wheel in there with a Pro 40 disc. Not good. I mean, when he was running, he said, well, I can't ever get above 
well, let me look into this. So I pull the wheel out and I go get the Pro 40 wheel, which was way bigger. You know what I mean? Knocked it out, I put it on, I ran it on the test stand, 100%, you know, all the time. Yeah. So make sure you got the right knockout wheel, make sure it's not worn out or busted off or whatever. Okay, and then from that point, we want to check our brush in, in this unit or your seed tube in your ME5 Which to make here. sure it's clean, not all gummed up. Right. There's the brush. So here's the brush. Um, when you get done at the end of the season, we turn this thing. Right here, there's a little wheel. So you'll back this off and that'll relax that brush and allow it to not stay stretched the entire winter. You know what I mean? Then you come back in, you roll that thing back up, you tighten that brush back up, you're ready to go. So make sure you, make sure you do that. I mean, there, there's like fibers in here. You know, it's not a rubber band. So if you get them fibers and they're constantly stretched in that one spot all winter, I'm going to say that they're going to be pretty weak on the tension end of the house. So. And while we're right here, um, just a reminder that there's two motors that run this. They're both the same. They're both identical motors, but you have two motors, one for your brush, one for your seed meter. But as Jesse says, if something happens, you can switch these motors around to see if you have a motor fault because they're both identical. Right. So when you get into these exact emerges, um, the best way to troubleshoot without having us come out and look at them is you can take any of these parts from one row and move them to the other to see if you've got any problems. Um, I have yet to see one of these motors fail. The older planters, we got the downforce sensor with a little round connector. It's got a little um, quick coupler that you pull it and squeeze it and pull it off and you snap it back together and that thing has got to be absolutely seated because if it's not, you'll get airs and airs and airs and they'll never go away. Um, this new planter, they've changed that. They've changed it to a three pin rectangular. Um, right now it's, it's not retrofittable. So what you, the planter I've got in the shop, what I did is I bought this um, contact enhancer, a little bottle about this big, cost you 70 bucks. So you take the little brush and you go to every one of them connectors and you dab it on there and you snap her back together to make sure you got that good solid connection and then you got that, that enhancer in there which stays there, you know, because it's sealed up or whatever. And then you shouldn't have the problem after that. But, um, so if you've got, if you've got down four sensor issues, don't go out and buy the $150 sensor or whatever it is, you know, just go out there and, and push it together. And if it, if it goes away, then that tells you that you should probably pop it off and maybe try some of that enhancer stuff on it. We've looked this over. We're in the field. Now what we want to do is we want to set our planner. And we want to set it to a sequence. Okay, So we want to set everything. We want to start with our row cleaners. Planner's in the ground. Set your row cleaner where you want it. Okay. Well, that's done. Okay. We're going to set our depth also. And then we're going to set our closing wheel pressure where we want it. Then we're going to set our downforce. The last thing we're going to do is set our downforce. Because if you set your downforce and then I go back here and do this, I change my downforce. Okay? I got my downforce set. I readjust my road cleaners. I change my downforce. Okay. We're changing our pressure on the ground. Every one of those other settings is pushing your unit up where the main one is pushing it down. So if you've got one of them other settings turned way up, you might have seed on top of the ground and you don't understand. I, I've got my downforce maxed out. It's not working. It's not working. Then all of a sudden you go out there and you change your, your trash whipper up and that sinks that way down beyond where you want to be. Yeah, because if, if your row cleaners are connected to your row unit, and our ground is hard to start with, those spikes are climbing on top of the right. ground. Right, right. They're and pushing they're it up and out. Near margin, but you're not calculating for. So that's the biggest thing when you set your unit. Okay. And then if you can't get seed in the ground and you keep going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and it isn't helping, stop, 
with the planter in the ground, if you can turn this wheel, your downforce isn't hard enough. I don't care what, the, what it's telling you, it's not pushing you in the ground or something's holding you up. Because there really is no reason you should, if you want two inches, you shouldn't be set down here to get two inches. There's something holding you out of the ground other right. than Mother Nature. If your blades are good, sharp, things should cut through. So, and that downforce is going to change. Like on older planters, um, if you've got pneumatic downforce, you've got, um, on a planter like this, you'll have five sensors. Uh, the bigger one, you'll have seven. The smaller one, you'll have three. So that thing isn't going to, it ain't reading every one. Like these ones right here are all hydraulic. So it's reading every individual row of downforce. So once again, once you get going and you got everything set and you get out there, say you're running a, a pass or two, uh, you might want to just get out and go across there and check those wheels. Are all my wheels doing the same thing or not? Pretty common, pretty easy. If we do it right the first time, then we shouldn't have any problems as we flow. Okay, now we're putting seed in the tank. As you're putting that seed in, we're going to run 80-20 um, graphite talk mix, and it's going to take a lot of it. Like I said, so if you've got a new exact emerge, it's going to be luck of the draw if you get out there and and all of them work. You might have to go to a bunch of them rows, like I said, and dump out just a, a, a huge amount of that um, mix in there so that way it lubes everything in that row unit. You know what I mean? It might be working all the way to the row unit, but once you get there, it might not work as good as it should. So um, just keep that in the back of your head. You know, you get out there and you're bumping along and all of a sudden you got one row that's just not putting anything out, you know, and everything looks right, everything set right. Um, it might just need that extra cup of talk in there to, to, make her, to make her work right. So. Yeah, and they're talking on this planter 20, 20 cups. Yeah. In this in one planter. Per tank. Per tank. Per tank. So, so it'd be a lot of scooping. So if you've got a young kid, you might want to have him out yeah. there. His arm is yep. way more flexible than yours is. Every fill. Yeah. They're talking no. Every, every, well, they're talking every fill. Every, every fill, yeah. Yep. Every fill, yep. Yep. Yeah, that's just a 16 on the prior year and 20 on this because of the bigger tank. Right. Is that one cup per tank? Yeah, per yeah. tank. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's a little You'll probably own too. Johnson & Johnson by the time this deal's over. <laughs> You're like, I didn't spend this on my kids, but I did on my, on my corn. Why don't you talk about your power generator, Jesse? So when you put that gearbox to that generator, we need to put grease in there to make sure it saves that, that brass bushing in there, you know, your brass splines. Um, otherwise, they'll wear and they'll wear and they'll wear. Every time you kick it in and out, it just slams into it. That grease is gonna take some of that away. So uh, once a year, when you get done with it or you're getting ready to go, split that thing apart. Let's make sure we got plenty of grease in there, put it back together. Um, and then your, your gearbox is gonna take 17 ounces of oil. Uh, if you think you had a leak or or it's not quite right, the only way to truly tell on that, there's no dipstick, no kind of measurement. You just need to drain it out and then put 17 ounces back in there. So that way you know you've got the right amount of oil in that gearbox. Yep, it's high guard. Yes, yes, it is high guard. Don't, don't go putting 80, 90 in that thing. It ain't, ain't going to work quite right. So, yes, high guard. So is that a service Yearly service. Yes, I would out. recommend that a guy should probably drain that out and then refill it, okay. you know, just to make sure that we've got the right amount in there. <laughs>